Pick up your gear and open your chests. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. On the Sword Coast, the allies will help with blades and bows and magic as well. Hey, hey, heroes on their way. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. Idle champions of the forgotten realms. Idle champions, it takes you never. From water deep to ice and air, head out the show, all shadow fell, hey, hey, together we stay. Walk to the monsters, walk to the boss, walk to the right, it's never a loss, hey, hey, bad guys to slay. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. I don't champions of the forgotten realms. I don't champions that you never realms. I don't champions that you want to dance. I don't champions. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Oh. Silly Mike. Welcome back to another edition of Gar Wars Guide, the tutorial show. I'm the guy. I'm, I'm that guy. Uh, today, we're going to be... Uh, I know it's it's odd. It's the second weekend of an event. The event's almost over. Uh, but there was extra laugh, la extra laugh, extra laugh. There were extra laughs last weekend. There was extra life last weekend, so there's no tutorial shows. So we're doing Star Wars Guide to Liar's Night Year Seven today instead. Today instead. So, uh, yeah. For those of you who are like, "Well, that's yesterday's code," it's because they asked for the code before I showed up on stream. So it's the same with every stream, folks. Until someone actually appears on camera. The code's the old code. Just just a heads up. <laughs> just a heads up. Uh, yeah, so for those of you who are like, hey, uh, I'm still trying to get the rest of, of my event done. Here you go. Or, hey, I don't really understand how these champions work. We're going to go over that today. Uh, or, hey, I just started a couple days ago. What is an event anyway? We're going we're gonna to do all that today. We're going to do all that today. Uh, with me today is Gabe, all lowercase, Gabe. Gabe's in the production booth. Uh, Gabe's going to be grabbing your questions. If you have a question, as it says down below in the little white box, put question colon in front and that way Gabe will grab it and throw it in the document because the way this show works, uh, is I don't answer all the questions live. I, you guys ask questions. It goes in the question doc in the second half of the show. I answer all your questions. Uh, it can be on topic. It can be off topic. You know, as long as it's about idle champions, we're good. We're good. Uh, I can't really, you know, outside of idle champions. Oh, oh, uh, all right. Uh, so let's dive in. Uh, so in an event, or before, when an event isn't happening, normally you just see Grand Tour of the Sword Coast at the top and a bunch of other campaigns at the bottom. New campaign potentially coming soon. Uh, but when an event shows up, uh, the event uh, shows up right at the top. Liar's Night. This is kind of the uh, 
Halloween themed event. Uh, when you click on it, there's one adventure node. There's only ever one adventure node, but there's three adventures to do. They're, they're all the same thing. It's all the trickster's delight uh, because the way events work is you have the same adventure and you have all the same enemies in the same order and everything. What changes is the layout uh, of the formation. Like, so Brig here, uh, I don't know, is that a pick? Is that a guitar pick or something? Or who knows? It's something. Kent, that's, that's definitely something too. Is that like a dagger or something? I don't know. Uh, and the Laura, that's a horse. It's a centaur. That's a centaur. It's definitely a centaur. Uh, so the layouts will be a little differently, uh, you know, a little different. Uh, but the enemies are all going to be the same. So you at least know what's going on. You're also going to share favor. Uh, every event has its own favor. So building up favor is going to be super useful to you. Uh, favor is what's going to make uh, everything uh, easier to do. And in fact, uh, we recommend getting a, a, trying to get a, a minimum level of favor before attempting to do the variants of these adventures. Um, and that way uh, you can just power right through them. Uh, you know, favor is, is kind of the big stick you hit things with in an event. In an event. Not everywhere else. Sometimes, but you know, a lot of times... Uh, you need favor, favor and a bunch of other stuff. But in an event, favor will do it. Favor will do it. Uh, now, the other thing you'll notice that you get in events are these liars' tarts. They, you'll, you'll, you'll have been playing the game, and they'll have been dropping off things that you killed. Uh, that's how you get them. You, you can't really farm them, per se. They drop at a specific rate. It's one every 25 seconds. It's a server-side calculation, meaning you can't speed it up in any way, shape, or form. You can't manipulate it with speed champions or potions or running multiple parties. It's just one for your account every 25 seconds. Now, you can get extra Liar's Tarts by using uh, bounty contracts. That's one of the consumable items you get from opening chests in the game. Uh, it's actually the, the really primary use of bounty contracts, honestly is saving them up and using them during an event so you can get a bunch of the event tokens uh, and then get a lot more gear for the champions. Now, uh, the way it works is every time you do any kind of thing related to an event, you have to pay a, a price and you have to pay that in the event tokens and the liar starts. So like uh, unlocking the initial champions, it's like 25 for Brig and Kent, the older champions, the two older champions, 25, uh, and then 100 for the newest champion, uh, super easy, right? After that, you pay more for things like starting a free play. So free play start off at 500 Liar's Tarts, and every time you do another free play, the cost goes up by 500 until it gets to the max cost of 2,500, and then it stays at 2,500. Uh, now, the thing about this, this means uh, for 10,000 tokens, you can do four free plays. Well, what do free plays get you in an event? Uh, in an event, specifically, this is how you earn extra chests for your champions. Free plays deliver extra chests. That's this uh, chest icon with the question mark. Still doesn't say it in the in the tooltip, but well, you know, one day. Uh, the question mark in the grayed out means well, it could be either a silver or a gold chest. And it depends. There's a one in three chance that it's going to be a gold chest. Gold chests are the good ones. Those are the ones we want because those are the ones that can have a chance to drop epic gear. Uh, but it could just drop silvers. Now, uh, the good news is they have a pity timer. They have bad luck protection. So if you don't get a gold chest in your first three runs for a specific champion, uh, the fourth run will guarantee one. Now, what that means is 10,000 tokens, four runs. You're guaranteed a gold chest. For 10,000 tokens, but you'll also get, at worst, three silvers, at most, three more golds. So it's always better to spend your tokens on free plays than it is to just buy chests from the store for 10,000 tokens. The only reason the store one exists is is truly a functional reason uh, is if it is Monday it, and it's almost noon, Pacifically speaking, uh, so uh, Monday at the end of the event, which will be Monday the 30th for, for this event, uh, and you don't have time to do your runs, you can at least grab uh, some chests. You know what I mean? 
So, but generally speaking, we, we encourage everybody just to run free plays. Just turn them. You only have to complete area 50 to get your reward. So they're really short runs. Uh, you know, if you have some speed champions, you can make it really fast. But yeah, really easy way to grab a bunch of extra gear uh, and item levels for your champions. Uh, but again, the first thing you want to grab is favor. So make sure you're trying to do each of the, the unlock adventures. Try to push as far as you can. Remember, when you're pushing for favor, there's no reason to sit on a single level for more than 20, 30 minutes. If, you can't, if, you, if you're farming there and you still don't have enough power to move forward, you're done. Time to restart. Time to do a new run. That's just There's no reason to go longer than that. Uh, in terms of the formation layout for deep pushing, uh, this one, probably. Probably Solora's. Uh, you get a two-tank front line. You'll get some adjacencies, uh, especially if you're a new player. You'll have a, a very friendly uh, second row, uh, whereas this is, you know, not going to be great for you. This is, you know, I mean, you could make this one work. There, there are a lot of adjacencies here. It's just weird to hang the tanks off the side. So, so Briggs or Thalora's are probably good ideas. Uh, but just do Kent stuff and then bail. Basically. Uh, all right. Let's talk about uh, the 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 variants. So every every champion is going to have three variants off of their uh, off their adventure. Uh, the variants are going to be the harder versions. That's the way this game works. So there's a base adventure, and then there's up to three variants off every adventure, and those variants are harder. And thus, when you're doing the variants, once you complete them, you just want to be you want to be done. Once the box pops up in a variant, uh, yeah, complete and leave. That's you know, that's the rule. Uh, now each variant has a different uh, area goal. Starts at 75, goes to 125, and goes to 175. It's the same every time. Uh, and that, thus each area, uh, each variant is going to have a different amount of favor needed to make it show as difficulty easy. But if you shoot for E08 or greater favor, uh, we use scientific notation in this house. That's, uh, what, a hundred million favor. Uh, but, but the numbers, as the numbers get big, it's just easier to say E08 or E09 or E10. Like you just know at a glance if things went up or down, right? Uh, shoot at E08, uh, it'll make all three of them uh, show as green. Uh, I have a breakdown of which of how much for each one in my guides uh, in my guides to each of the champions uh, and to the events. You can find those over on the Reddit uh, on the subreddit wiki under resources by Garwar. All right. First one for Brig, Dueling Bards. Now, the challenge isn't just the area goal. Uh, the challenge is actually all of this text down here, or at least most of it. At least most of it. Brig starts in the formation. He can be moved, but not removed. So you have to use Brig. These these are kind of training adventures, right? Uh, in each area, Dwergar Bard appears. The Bard can only be damaged by other Bards. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to run a, a full formation of Bards, or that your DPS needs to be a Bard. It just means there's going to be uh, a, a Dwergar bard that appears in each area. That's it. He doesn't. Ha it doesn't have to die. There's nothing that says it needs to die. So you can basically run Brig and then ignore ignore the Dwergar bard. If Brig kills it, great, but don't don't worry about killing the bard. <laughs> bard champions deal 100% additional damage. That's great, but again, you don't need. You can if you want, but you don't need... I'm just trying to make it easy for you. You don't have to make a bard your DPS. So overall... Eh, eh. You can do whatever you want there, pretty much. Uh, Discord and Mallet... Now, all of my recommendations assume... Or presume... I shouldn't... We all know what happens when you assume things. Presume that you have the... That everything shows this green. Because why would you do it before then? <laughs> All right. Uh, now, there was a bunch of text down here, but that's basically teaching you about how Brig works, and we're going to do that uh, in the next part of this. Uh, so, discordant melodies. Well, note down here, the formation changes. There's a red X. wonder what that means. A goblin bard joins the formation. That's what that means. So, this means there's an NPC in your party, and you're down a champion. Being down a champion is bad. The more champions you're down, the more the red Xs there are, the the more difficult it gets 
in a very big way because champions are power. Uh, you learn this right away with the very first variant in the game. Are you chicken? Uh, it may not look like it has a big difficult uh, goal, but it's got a bunch of red X's and that means it's a no good, very bad day unless you have a lot of favor. Uh, so, uh, having, a, again, having more favor can help out here, but as long as everything shows green, uh, you should have enough favor to do this even down a champion. Uh, so whenever the bard plays their instrument, uh, champions adjacent to them have a 50% chance to be stunned for two seconds. So that's these three formation slots. That means you don't want your DPS in one of these three formation slots. You want them, uh, in one of these four on the outside. Or if you're running a tank DPS, right? Just don't put them next to the Goblin Bard. Enemies deal uh, triple damage. That's what 200% means in this game. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's not as, that's not that big of a deal, if I'm being honest. A gold find of champion damage is reduced by 99%. Now, that's probably going to scare the heck out of a lot of people. It shouldn't. Again, we're dealing with large numbers in this game. And, and this is not exact, but... I'm going to round up here. 100% is technically EO2. EO2. So what we're doing is we're reducing damage and gold find by EO2. Two orders of magnitude. So how do we fix that? Oh, I don't know. Getting two orders of magnitude more gold find. That'd do it. And since champion damage is a function of your gold find early on, uh, I don't know, that'll fix that problem too. So again, just making sure that everything shows is green, uh, you'll have more than enough uh, gold find to to overcome that 99% restriction. Not, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. You just gotta just gotta get a little extra gold find, and you'll be fine. Musical accompaniment: An elf bard appears in each area with the masked man. Uh, until the elf bard is destroyed, the masked man is invulnerable. This is a problem. Uh, the masked man is a pain. If you've been, if, if, if this is like, if you were new uh, and, and our newer account and you're trying to do this, uh, this event, you're probably like, what? The masked man keeps one shotting everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's not his mechanic. He just does a lot of damage. Uh, an inordinate amount of damage. He's sneak attacking you every time he comes up. Uh, he shouldn't be. He doesn't have friends nearby, but he is. <laughs> but he is. Um, so you need to kill the bard. You need to kill the bard. And that's just kind of... You know, as long as you're killing everything that comes out on the screen fairly quickly, the bard's going to die. All right? But if you're, if you're having trouble clearing waves... You're going to get wrecked. So, you're going to want a lot of favor. Maybe more than what makes the show is green and easy. It should be fine at green and easy, but, you know, maybe more. Maybe instead of E8, maybe E10. If you can get it. If not, just, you know, you can try it and see what happens. But yeah, as long as you're killing things, everything quickly through 175, you're fine. And you can test this uh, by doing a free play. You don't have to test it by spending, you know, 1,250 Liar's Tarts. You can test it going to a free play that you would do anyway just to get more favor or to get a free chest. Run to 175. Did you kill everything quickly all the way there? Even on the boss levels? Are all the trash mobs before the boss dead instantly? Then you're good. If you started having trouble in the, you know, 160s, 170s, and it slows down and things are getting to your, your tank, you need more favor. Every time the bard attacks, the damage of the mass man is increased by 100%, but you should be killing him instantly. So it shouldn't matter, right? Uh, all right. For Kent, bossing around. Kent begins in the formation. He can't be removed. It doesn't say he can be moved, but I think he can. You know, he has to be able to be moved because when, they, when, you, when you can't move them, it shows a C for, for champion in the formation. There's an additional wave of enemies in each boss area. Okay. Boss, uh, bosses have three times the health and deal three times the damage. Ow. Okay, so you just you need more you need more power. Well, guess what? If you wait to do this until you have these showing as green, you'll have it. 
it's not again you'll have so much more gold than you need not a problem uh, but otherwise if you were trying to scrape this out and this didn't show easy like it showed fair or worse might be a little rough might be a little uh, a little rough. Uh, Kent begins in the formation. Uh, he can't be removed, but he can be moved. You may only use champions with a dexterity and charisma of 13 or higher. This is a double restriction. This could be annoying. Uh, champions affiliated with the rivals of Waterdeep are also allowed. So this is this is kind of like, hey, it's rewarding you if you've already got other rivals. But if you don't, you could be running a pretty restricted formation. That could be the big challenge. And when you have a restricted formation, uh, for every uh, champion, like empty formation slot you have, you want to try to get an extra order of magnitude of favor. And also, any champion you're just throwing in that's filler, like that really isn't doing anything for you, extra order of magnitude of favor. Again, favor is the stick we beat things with. In events, in events. Right? The Poisoned Rat Incident. There's more of a story here, and I'd like to hear it. Kent begins in the formation. He can, it can't be removed, but he can be moved. Each wave spawns one to three giant rats. They don't drop gold, nor do they count towards quest progress. This is what I call like a swarm variant. They're basically trying to rush a lot of enemies at you. It's not a big deal. First time an enemy is hit by a normal attack, they only take one point of damage. Now that's kind of a problem. So everything has to get hit twice. Doesn't matter how much damage you're doing. Everything has to get hit twice, which means having uh, things that do damage over time <coughs> can't <coughs> uh, or or multi attacks, things like that. That's going to help here. That's going to help here. Uh, but now keep in mind, uh, you know, all of your other champions are hitting things and they're not necessarily doing, you know, outside of your DPS. They're not doing a lot of damage anyway, but they're going to take a point of damage from that, and then, then they'll take full damage. So, yeah, not not a super difficult uh, variant. Not a super difficult variant, once you understand it. All right, now for Thalora. By the light of Tura. Thalora starts in the formation. She can't be moved uh, or removed. And this, again, this is said we know this because there's a C there for champion right at the front. So that's where Thalora is going to be. She is a tank. So this works. <laughs> They're not they're not being mean to you. It, she's the tank. It, this works. Uh, only Thalora and champions in the column behind her can deal damage. Well, that's fine. That's fine, because Thalora, spoiler alert, buffs the column behind her. Just like Nayeli. So, uh, this column of four, you'll get four champions dealing damage. This is not a this is not a problematic variant. It may be a little slower for you to get to 75, because all the other champions won't be killing things early on, but Otherwise, it's not really a problem. Otherwise, it's not really a problem. Allies of the Sky Sense. The Sky Sense. Uh, Thalora starts in the formation. She can't be moved or removed. Again, you can see right there where she's going to be. You may only use champions with strengths of 12 or less. Female or non-binary champions. Or speed champions. This is actually a fairly large group. It's a fairly large group. Because it wasn't and, it was or. So, not as restrictive as you might think. What they're trying to do here is, this is one of uh, this is one of her features. I think this is her specialization. Uh, it is. It's her specializations. They're just trying to have you build around her specializations. So, if you can pick one of these, uh, one of these is going to be what you want your primary DPS to be, and then you want a bunch of the same kind, if you can, you're going to get more damage. You're going to get more damage. But again, not a super restricted formation. You can, I mean, this is a lot of groups. No one trick pony. Again, Thalora starts in the front. Uh, for the first 10 areas, non boss quest requirements are multiplied by 10. 10. Uh, why would they do this? Why, why would they? That means normally it's 25 enemies on a non boss area. This means it's 250. You'd have to kill 250. Why would they do this? Because of her speed ability. Uh, so the way her speed ability works is she will, once she kills an enemy, she will rush you forward uh, to a set area. And that area is based off 
the rush stacks you've earned on a previous run, kind of like Briv, uh, but it's capped at your favor total. So the idea here that they really want you to do is they really want you to get a 10 billion favor, E10 favor. Because if you get E10 favor, uh, you will rush once she gets a kill, hopefully on area one, she will rush to area 10. And area 10 is a boss level. It won't have the 10, it won't have the 10 times requirements. And then everything else plays out as normal. They're trying to teach you how her speed mechanic works and how to, and how to manipulate it, right? How to gain function out of it. So if you have less than E10 favor, uh, you're going to be killing a lot of enemies on some of these, but it's fine. They're, it's not like they're harder, and it's it's an area pre-10, you, you know, so we can just slow you down a little bit. But yeah, they're trying to teach you how the speed function works. With every non-boss enemy wave, uh, a fire elemental, elemental spawns with ten armored hit points. The enemy, this enemy is not drop gold or count towards quest progress. Doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can ignore it. Doesn't matter that it shows up on every non-boss uh, wave. There will be a lot of them on the screen, but you don't have to kill them. You just have to kill everything else. Not a huge problem. Uh, again, if you if you've done the if you've done the thing they want and gotten E10 favor, this is a breeze. This is a breeze. All right, let us dive in uh, to a free play for Talora. And we'll talk about each of the champions. Uh, let's get Talora in. Boom. Talora is going to is definitely uh, lately become the centaur of attention. We're going to have a lot of horse puns, folks. It's just going to happen. It's just going to kind of has to happen. Brig, Brig, Brig. I got Brig in his uh, gold outfit because reasons. It's Brig. Uh, and Kent, no, I just went right past. We got Kent in the Pride Marshal Kent outfit. All right, let's go. Uh, I should probably level some people up here. I should probably level some people up here. Yeah, I will make puns all day long, even if it makes me hoarse. Uh, all right, let's talk about Brig. Let's talk about Brig. Uh, Brig is uh, technically a member of the Sirens of the Realms. Uh, that's an incomplete affiliation. I don't know if it'll ever be completed. Uh, don't worry about that part so much. Just, just function, worry about how Brig functions. Uh, male human, rogue bard, combo, chaotic good, and pure support. Pure support. Uh, no, you can't say nay to horse puns. That's not the way this works. Uh, you're saddled with them. I have an unbridled love for them, I guess you could say. Uh, all right, base attack is war loot. Brig leaps out and smashes a random enemy with his metallic guitar. Look at that. It's got spikes on it and everything. That'd hurt. That'd hurt. All right, Brig is all about bringing the hype, okay? Brig is all about bringing the hype. Brig increases the damage of everyone in the formation by 100%. That's it. That's all he does. No, that's, that's not true. Uh, for each hype stack, the buff is increased by 10%. Stacking additively. Okay. So, uh, we want to build... Clearly, this this tells us we want to build hype. It's a damage of everyone in the formation. That means Brig doesn't care where you put him. As long as he's at the party, he's happy. Uh, at least it's based off this, right? Rallying cord. Every All the abilities are ways to gain hype. Okay, so you gotta pay attention to each one and understand how to how to optimize each one. Alright. Rallying cord. Briggs hype is increased by five, while at least one enemy has defeated been defeated within the last ten seconds. So you get five hype if you're killing things quickly. If no enemy has been been defeated in the last twenty seconds, which means there's a ten second period where there's it's not generating hype here. Brig gains one hype stack each time a unique champion attacks up to a maximum of 10. So you can actually get 10 hype off this ability when you're at a place where you're not killing quickly at all. Okay. Uh, so, but remember, the second you kill something, it's going to drop to 5. 
Because, well, at least one enemy is defeated in the last 10 seconds, right? So it's something that, that builds up and then will sit at a high level until you until you kill something and then it's going to drop down again and then it'll come back up. But it's not a huge difference, 5 and 10. But just know that's that's the difference between trying to get to maximize Rallying Cord means you need to be somewhere where you're not killing really uh, at all. That's kind of the point. He's helping you ramp up your damage so that you can't kill it. Inspired Bard. Brig gains one hype stack for each adjacent champion. So Brig really wants to be surrounded by a lot of people. Ideally, that's what he'd get. But it is only one base. He also gains an additional hype stack for each adjacent champion whose listed attack damage is higher than his. So this is where things get weird. He wants to be the lowest damage dealer. He wants to be surrounded by people who can hit harder than he can. Now, the listed damage is the damage that's down under their feet here. So in this example, uh, he Thalor's damage is lower than Briggs, so he wouldn't be getting an additional point here, but he would be getting an additional point off Kent. Okay. So that's how you can figure that out. You're just going to look at what's shown under their feet. All right. Uh, so, again, uh, the, the most you can have uh, adjacent to a champion in this game is six? Six. So the most that this could give you is six, right? Now I'm, now I'm second-guessing myself. No, it's two, four, yeah, six. The most you can get is off of this is an as it is six for each adjacent plus six more if you get that. So twelve max. Twelve max with a very specific formation, right? Again, it's only one per uh for the list listed higher the attack damage, so don't go breaking your formation over getting an additional hype stack, right? Think of these as bonus things you get. Think of it as bonus. Sirens Chant increases the effect of Briggs' height by 200% for each champion in the formation with the Sirens of the Realms affiliation, stacking multiplicatively. This would have been a great ability uh, had they moved forward with adding more Sirens of the Realms. As it is, don't worry about it. It's not. It's not worth. It's not worth it. Unfortunately, sorry, folks. Brig, Brig at some point, hopefully, will get a rework. Maybe in a bard season. I think a pure bard season would be fantastic. So, uh, and, and then maybe, and then maybe Brig, Brig will get reworked. All right, specializations. You can either be a backup singer or the cream of the crop. Uh, backup singer Brig gains two hype stacks for each champion in front of him in the formation. I like to use this one, especially in a formation layout like this, where everyone is in front of Brig. And I could throw him in the back. I know I lose off adjacencies, but but I make up for it, right? I I feel I make up for it anyway. Uh, yeah. So that'll get me uh, 18. 18 hype stacks, right? In this layout. I'll take it. Uh, I mean, you know, you can find a, uh, you know, a good middle ground. Uh, cream of the crop, though, kind of works against his other mechanic for games two hype stacks for each champion of the formation whose listed attack damage is lower than himself and since you want to kind of have people who are higher than him next to him this this can kind of be an anti-feature so that's why i tend to go backup singer most of the time uh and just make it work and just make it work uh let's level up some brig over here all right Critical moment. Brig games one hype stack for every five enemies on the screen. Round it up. Okay. He gains an additional ten hype stacks whenever a boss enemy is on the screen. So let's do some math here. On a normal boss area, you can have ten regular enemies. Okay. That means two hype stacks for regular enemies, and then plus the boss, twelve. So on a boss, a regular boss here, you're gonna have you can you can generate twelve hype stacks. On a regular, uh, what I call trash area, which is anything that isn't a boss area, <laughs> it's just trash. Uh, you're just dealing with trash mobs. 
Uh, you can the max and number of enemies on the screen can be a hundred, a hundred, which means you could get twenty. You can get twenty hype stacks if you can build up a hundred enemies. Now I, I'm I'm giving you maximum numbers here because Briggs' achievement is based off reaching a set amount of hype stacks, and you're going to need to figure out how to manipulate these. And this is the, the see, here's the numbers you want to work with. So 20 on a regular area, if you can build up 100 enemies. Now, the good stuff, where you can get the maximum, isn't actually on a, on, you would think, oh, well, 20 on a, on a regular uh, area, that's, that's the maximum. No. There are bosses in this game, they are few and far between, but there are bosses in this game that spawn... Or that that come out, they're there, and then spawn an infinite wave of enemies. Uh, Valindra Shadow Mantle is maybe one of the first ones you run into in the game. Those types of bosses will will meet the same trash area max of a hundred enemies you can have on a boss level. A hundred enemies plus the boss, meaning technically you could have thirty hype stacks just from this ability alone. And when you're hunting for the achievement, that might be how you want to do it. That might be how you want to do it. Okay. All right. Uh, volume up. So this is the one that this is the one thing that doesn't build hype stacks, but it's based off hype stacks. So increase the damage bonus of hype based on the highest number of hype stacks that Brig has ever had at once. So this is this is why the achievement is what it is. They want it, They want you to get. I think it's fifty. Uh, they want you to get fifty or higher because that's going to set volume up at a very solid number for you, and give you a consistent boost in everything else you're doing. So the increase is 5% per hype stack, stacking multiplicatively. So getting this to it, getting your max hype, uh, or getting a solid hype contribution is a good idea. Let's go see where I got mine. Mine's at 56. So that's an EO4 boost, just straight off the bat to hype. It's a solid number. There's You could probably get higher, but not by a whole lot. Not by a whole lot. Uh, and that's got my hype. Uh, even at only 10 stacks right now, I'm at about an E11 buff. And that's that's on the back of uh, volume up. All right. All right. Uh, ultimate attack solo. Brig performs a killer solo with flashing lights and musical notes flying everywhere, damaging and pushing enemies back with massive sound power. For the next 30 seconds, Brig, Brig's hype stacks are increased by 11. Oh, yeah. Uh, so here's another way. Once you get that mat, you want to keep this in your pocket. When you're when you're sitting, uh, maybe, you know, and you're trying to get that 50 hype stacks. Here's, here's 11 for you. Here's 11 for you. So as long as you can hit 39, uh, you can you can hit this. And remember finding that one boss that streams permanent enemies or, you know, a hundred enemies out, that's 30 right there. So yeah, it's doable. When, once you understand how everything, how everything works, it's doable. Just remember, this is going to spike you a lot. Here's what it looks like. Audio effects added by me. If you didn't figure that out. (laughs) Uh, yeah. So if, yeah, if you've gotten close, if you've gotten close and didn't use the ultimate, go use the ultimate. All right. Item wise, a pair of damage all champions items. Hey, look, he buffs hype. Shocker. And then volume up. Hey, that's that permanent boost. So he's buffing the things that need to be buffed. Uh, then ultimate attack and ultimate cooldown. Feet wise, uh, damage all champions. You've got hype. Uh, triple hype. You got volume up again. They've, they're very straightforward with these. Uh, you know, and then an intelligence. Hey, this this qualifies Brig for uh, Strahd, Patron Strahd. All right. So again, Brig is some of the old guards. So it doesn't have a wide variety of feats. It's really just focused on uh, on the hype and the volume up. 
right. Uh, all right, let's move on from Brig. Let's talk about Kent. Let's talk about Kent. Kent is from the Rivals of Waterdeep. This is a completed affiliation. It has a lot of people in it. Dahani, Gazra, Kent, Slee, Shaka, and Virgil. Kent is a male tiefling rogue, neutral good. Kent will play as DPS or support or some combination of both. Some combination of both. Uh, Kent has a passive ability. That's what the level zeros are referred to. Uh, inseparable. He shares this with Virgil. If Virgil qualifies for an adventure restriction based on his tags, age, ability, his scores, etc., Kent may be used as well. This basically means Kent and Virgil go everywhere together. Kent and Virgil go everywhere together. Uh, base attack is rapier. Kent strikes the closest enemy with his rapier. So remember, as a DPS, he's going to hit whatever's closest to you. This does matter at times. Token... Uh, here we go. Kent, I'm going to tell you right now, Kent is built to reward progress in the game. Kent is going to be an okay new player champion, but as you complete more and more of the game and and start pushing deeper and deeper and getting more and more stuff, Kent is going to become more and more powerful. Okay. This is the first of those ability, Tokens of the Departed. Kent keeps a soul trinket of the highest level boss defeated in each campaign uh, and the highest level boss defeated in, in all events. So it doesn't have to be each event. It's just in, in events as general. Where he was present. So where you used him. If he was there, like right now, he's in the formation as we kill this uh, Area 90 boss on the next level. He will get a, if that was the highest I'd ever been, he would get a soul token that says 90 for events. Okay. Kent increases the damage of all champions in his column by 10% for each soul trinket level. And he adds these up. So you get one for each campaign and you get one for events. There's currently seven campaigns plus the event, which means you could have eight different soul trinkets, each with their own level assigned to them. Currently the highest level soul trinket you can get not counting bugs is 2000 okay so that means if you could get 2000 in all of those i'm not saying you have to do this but if you get 2000 in all of those that means you'd have 16000 soul trinket levels which means he'd be buffing by 160000% which is eo5 that's a nice eo5 okay so this doesn't get ridiculous. Uh, you don't have to go all the way to 2000, but getting, getting, you know, getting him in there and grabbing your soul, soul trinkets when you get to a new high uh, watermark in an adventure, good idea. Now the key here, it doesn't say anywhere here that he has to be in the formation the first time you defeat the boss. This is important. Sometimes things say that. This doesn't. So you can push super deep with a, without Kent in your formation. Then, after you've beat the boss, come back to the boss level, swap Kent in, wreck the boss with like ultimates or whatever, get your soul token. Doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be with Kent in your formation. Just want to be clear. Uh, here's my list: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I've I've eight now. We just did Zerixis. <laughs> hadn't done that one before, so I had two thousand. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't done this in a while. As you can see, I've only got some of them that are they're fairly level. I got one that's in a broken amount. I, I, that was a bug. Uh, but yeah. And I'm running EO6, but that's because of, uh, of this uh, item. But yeah. So post stack bonus EO5. That's I've got a solid post stack bonus. Got a solid amount of trinket levels. It could go higher. I just got to remember to put them in. All right. Remembering the old days. Remembering the old days. Each time Kent or the ghostly spirit from his ultimate attacks. Spoiler alert. He's got a ghostly spirit in his ultimate. Uh... He gains a nostalgia stack that lasts until entering a new area. So this is a ramp up effect on your current area. 
for for damage. Okay, based off attack speed. Kent increases his damage by 50% for each nostalgia stack, stacking multiplicatively. That's the good way. Okay, so Kent does like attack speed bonuses. And putting and hitting the ultimate will help boost his damage multiplicatively because he gains stacks for himself and the ghost attacking. Uh, buffs are applied to the post stack value, so that means it's not the OP way, but it's still it's still the good way. And nostalgia stacks are capped at 25 stacks. So there's a maximum amount of damage you can boost here, but this is a very good ability. Remember, you know, anytime you have a multiplicatively stacking ability with a decent number of stacks, very, very good ability that you want to keep in mind. Uh, adding item levels to this champion pays dividends usually. Well, not as much here. Never mind. That's when it's that's when it's a uh, buff supplied to the pre stack value, but uh, but stacking these up is pays dividends. Extra Kent is very uh, Kent's force of personality emboldens his companions. Kent increases the damage of all champions by your current achievement bonus. Remember when I said he's got uh, he's a champion that rewards your progress in the game. This is the only one that bases anything off achievement bonuses. So if we hit A and we pull up our achievement bonus, it's the thing down here at the bottom right. Your number may vary. Uh, I currently have every achievement in the game. Uh, and my bonus is, you know, isn't even really EO6. So keep in mind, extra is extra. Because you're already getting this. You're already getting this. It's just giving it to you again, basically, right? Because you're already getting an increased all champions damage. Kent's giving it to you again. Now, yeah, as we get further and further in the game, well, this number is going to go up, and and because they add achievements ev all the time, every event there's five more achievements, right? Uh, and then as they add new uh, features to the game, there's new sections like mode drawn automation, trials, legendary, multi-party mode, patrons. We've gotten so many over the years. Yeah, the number will go up, but it's again, it's a nice little bonus that doesn't mean you need to go achievement hunting. I want to be clear, uh, but just know that your achievements are going to, as you complete achievements, uh, this will help Kent out. And they just added a feature now, uh, part of achievements. Uh, if you haven't done an achievement, uh, there will be a little star here that you can click uh, to track it over here. Uh, in your quest challenge tracker, so it'll look like it'll look like these with the little um, with the little star. Track this quest, but it'll be track this achievement. Okay, that's going to help people that want to go achievement hunting. Whales from the grave. Uh, I really want a undersea themed Kent skin where these become actual whales. I've been waiting for that since it came out. But whales from the grave, the weather changes to fog. Weather changes are important because, because Virgil. So the weather changes to fog. For 30 seconds, whenever Kent attacks, a ghostly spirit is summoned and attacks an additional enemy, if possible, dealing bud damage. So this is great. This is You're generating a, an extra attacker that's doing bud-based damage. Even if Kent isn't your DPS... This helps because your DPS will have set your bud and the the ghostly spirit will effectively become a second DPS for you. Okay, here's what it looks like. There's the fog. Uh, there's the spirit. You'll see it fly out every now and then over here on the right-hand side. Uh, there, there it is. So it flies in from the right-hand side of the screen and hits something and then takes off up to the top. Uh, and it'll do that, uh, you know, whenever it has a chance. I don't know. He, he hangs out sometimes and sometimes he doesn't. We're killing things with everything else instead, I guess. Anyway, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. All right. Specializations. Specializations here in... It's a lot of people are like, well, one's DPS and one's support. And, and I don't think that's the case. Uh, the one here, I, I feel it's more like, uh, one is affiliation bonuses and one's support, but it really just kind of, it's whatever you want. Uh, you can use, 
Yeah, the main one is potent poison can be potent potent poison has specific use case scenarios. I think that's more important to keep in mind than thinking uh, DPS and support. Robust rivals is definitely a DPS one though. Uh, Ken increases the attack bonus of tokens of the party by 100% for each rivals of Waterdeep champion stacking multiplicatively. So if you are running a rivals formation, Kent will do a lot of damage, and you would want robust rivals. Potent Poison is definitely a, the support specialization, but it might also be a good idea uh, in a non-Rivals formation as your DPS. Because whenever Kent attacks an enemy and doesn't kill it, it is affected by a virulent poison. The poison deals four seconds worth of bud to the enemy each second for four seconds. Obviously, ideally, you want this as support. Because if he is the if he's if he's the primary DPS, you're thinking, well, then if he doesn't kill it, then it's not doing anything. Not true. Armor and segmented health, like se armor and hit based health, so all kinds of segmented health. So if if Kent attack is your primary DPS and attacks an armored enemy, he won't kill it. He'll take an armor chunk off, and then he'll do four seconds worth of blood to the enemy every four seconds, which could take four more armor segments off. Right, So there is a use case scenario for Poison Poison when you are the primary DPS in a non-rivals formation. But when you are support, you definitely want to be running Potent Poison because you want it. You want that bud damage. You want that bud damage. We're just going to go ahead and run that. But just know there's, you know, you can use either of them as a DPS uh, option, but one is more for... Uh, Rivals and one is more for armored enemies. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Item wise, uh, damage all champions' items. We get tokens of the departed. So again, you put in that effort. Uh, you can boost that effort a little bit here. It is post stack though. Uh, remember in the old days, uh, that's that's the the nostalgia stack. So this is a great uh, this is a great boost as well. But again, it's post it's post stack buff uh, extra. Uh, so this will multiply the bonus you're getting from achievements. So that's nice. Uh, and then uh, ultimate attack cooldown. Right? Feet-wise, damage of all champions, self-damage, because he's a DPS. We've got tokens of departed feats. We've got, remember the old days feats. We've got extra feats. Yeah. And they're pretty high now. I didn't even notice nowadays. There's some, These are some solid ones. 120, 80, 80. Yeah, I, I should probably pick those up. I should probably pick those up. For when I'm running Kent. Uh, let's see. Can we can we do this yet? I don't think we can because I think the mass Man is going to just Shrek us. Because uh, our tank is not super tanky yet. And then this is segmented health. So, you know. We're probably dead. Oh, we got some knockbacks. We got some knockbacks. And dead. And dead. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, keep him away, keep him away. No, no, Brig just can't, and dead. Okay. Oh, the mask man sucks. All right, Thalora, our newest champion. Our newest champion. First ever centaur in the game. She is a medium sized centaur, for those that are wondering. Female centaur paladin, a lawful neutral, tanking support and speed. No affiliation. Thalora arrives as part of Idol Champions Presents Fate Breaker, folks, right up here in the box. The things that we've been voting on. She's one of the Fate Breaker champions. She's one of the Fate Breaker champions. Uh, so you can see you can see Alicia Marie playing her live on Mondays while Fate Breaker continues. She has a 25 overwhelm, a 25 overwhelm. That is the number uh, of enemies she could take before she starts taking extra damage from all of them. Base attack is Windsong Strike. Thalora strikes an enemy with her hooves and another with her blade, so it is a double hit. And she will move to different enemies, which can be nice. Uh, oh, I guess we can cover the ultimate. Uh, oh, well, it's on cooldown. We'll come back to it. Uh, her passive ability is her speed ability, and a lot of people have been confused by this. So let me make sure I can explain it as clearly as possible. Uh, part of the confusion is there were some bugs with it. Uh, I feel like they've 
the major ones have all been taken care of. So if you're still running into bugs, please make sure you're patched all the way to current. Um, yeah. Plateaus of Unicorn Run. The Laura gains a rush stack. Oh, hold on. The Laura gains a rush stack for every 10 areas she completes in an adventure, and these stacks persist through resets. I want to be clear, this second part where the stacks persist through resets, I get why it's there, but that's that's not super important. Um, you can basically put her in late in a run, build up her stacks, and then put her somewhere else. And Yeah, that's what they're trying to get you. But the important part is that she's building stacks. You get one stack every 10 areas. Um... And when you complete the, like it's you earning them. And then when you complete the adventure, then she owns them. And then on the next adventure, she's going to use them. Okay. The Laura's rush target is equal to her number of rush stacks. Or the current campaign's favor exponent, whichever is smaller. That favor exponent, again, this is scientific notation. That's why you should switch to this, because this is what it's talking about. It's the number after the E. So if you have E17 favor, her rush target is either area 17 or whatever number of rush stacks you have if the number of rush stacks is lower. If you only have five rush stacks, her rush target is five. Okay, but if you have 25 rush stacks, her target would then be 17. Okay, and when we say rush target, it is the area she is going to rush to. She is not Briv. She does not jump whatever number of areas her thing is. That's not it. She is moving to a specific target area. Okay, and and when I click over here in a moment, I'm going to click on uh, the formation buffs. It will tell you what her current rush target is and what her maximum rush target potential is um, so that you know, so that you know. Okay, when Thalora kills her first enemy in an adventure, she spends all of her rush stacks and skips to the first area past her rush target. I, d I think this part is still broken. I think this part is still broken. A, I really don't want it to say skips. I want it to say it rushes. Uh, but whatever. But I don't think it's the first area past her rush target. I think it's she moves right now. Eh, it would explain some things. Right now, it may be buggy. Most of the time, she's running to her rush target, in my opinion. Sometimes she runs to the area past it. We'll talk about that in a second. So just know that's... But the main thing to know here is uh, it's when she gets a kill. Now, if you're killing with familiars, uh, I think they tried to make it so that as long as she's in her attack animation, even if something else kills... The, the enemy before she gets there, it should get, trigger the credit. And I have seen this be pretty smooth uh, recently. I think it was a hot fix because I didn't see it in the in the change log. The Laura gathers all the rewards, including gold, which is new, from bosses skipped in this fashion, but nothing from the normal monsters. So that means you're going to get your gems out of your boss bags. You're going to get your chests out of your boss bags. If you got Black Viper in the formation, you'll get your red gems out of the boss bags. And you'll even get the gold from killing the boss, which is new. But that's, honestly, that part's kind of unimportant. So she is fantastic, clearly, fantastic for speed farms. Because she gathers all the stuff from the bosses. That's exactly what we want to see. It's exactly what we want to see. Now, if you have a low amount of favor, she's not going to do much for you, right? If you have a high amount of favor, she's going to she's going to carry you. She's going to throw you on her back and carry. You. It's going to be a big deal. 
Uh, she's not a speed champion you put in on your first run in a new campaign or event when you have zero favor, because she ain't taking you anywhere. <laughs> she ain't rushing anywhere. If your campaign favor is zero, she didn't do anything. She'll burn her rush stacks for you, but but your, your, her area target was zero, and you were on one, so... Right? Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. She is a very good, she is a very good speed champion because she skips to get in a, in a, in a gem farming formation because she's going to skip a bunch of areas, collect that stuff for you. Just makes things a little more efficient for you. Um, now the every 10 areas, uh, you know, I don't, it's, it's going to be difficult to maximize. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it's going to be difficult in a gem farm to maximize her rush stacks. Uh, but in, you know, if you're doing deep pushes, she's just going to help you skip the first part of any new any new run, uh, which is nice. It's just another it's another functional speed effect for deep pushes, which is good. She has a feat, though, and I'm going to talk about this feat first. Thin their ranks. Reduce the number of areas required per rush stack for Thalora's plateaus, plateaus of Unicorn run ability by 50%. I had this in for a reason, uh, because it's fantastic. Um, I didn't think it was going to be that great at first, but then I realized for gem runs, it's perfect. Uh, so then it's uh, every five areas. There is it, this then makes it super efficient. It is it is a it is a if you're doing gem farming, that's it's a feat you want. It's a feat you want to pick up uh, because it will make sure that she always has enough rush stacks to hit her max rush target every time. Every time. Uh, now this is a passive. There's no item support for it. We have the feet support, but that's it. So enjoy the feet support, but there's no changing this. The only way you can increase her rush target is by increasing your favor in a campaign. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now, if we look over here, like I said, it's going to explain it to you a little more. Current rush stacks. I only have 19 uh, areas until the next stack one. So I'm, I'm, you know, if I clear this next one, we're good. Max rush area, 62. So that means I have enough favor in this camp. I have E62 favor in the event. So I would be able to skip to 60, area 62. Okay, an approximate rush area currently, though, would be 19 if it were to trigger. But it's not going to trigger because she's not going to kill anything. <laughs> she has no damage, right? Um, so yeah, so it does do a good job of showing what's going on over here. Just know, approximate rush area is based off your stacks. Max rush area is based off your favor. Right? Okay. Uh, actual abilities. Here we go. Strength of the Luma. Thalora increases the damage champions in the column behind her by an amount. So she buffs just like Nayeli. So for new players, she should be super familiar. She buffs like Nayeli. She's in slot one, so you can actually have a tank in slot one and start tanking right from the beginning of an adventure, which is a first. No, I don't count nerds. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't care what you say. Uh, yeah. So we finally have a, a, we finally have a tank in the slot one that, uh, that can just get, get out and get working as a tank immediately. Paladins resolve each time Thalora attacks and doesn't kill an enemy, which is what you want out of a support champion. She increases the effect of Strength of the Luma by 15% until the area changes. This stacks multiplicatively. That's the good way. And it caps at 100 stacks. That's a lot. That's a lot. Now, here's the problem. <laughs> she has an 8 second attack speed. So, uh, pairing her with champions uh, that boost attack speed? Big deal. If you can get a Whittle in here with somebody that has an attack speed of like three or lower, suddenly she, she's she's going to build that Paladin's Resolve a lot faster, right? So having a fast attack speed, there are other champions that can reduce attack speed as well. She's even got a feat for it. Uh, reducing her attack speed, big deal. Big deal, okay? All right, let's talk about the ultimate. The Light of Mount Tura. Thalora charges through the enemies, dealing one massive hit to them in a wide pass. So basically like a screen-wide AoE. She then increases the damage of all champions by 400% for 15 seconds. So she's going to do a pulse of damage, but then boost everybody. Everybody's going to be five times damage for 15 seconds. Short. This is a short buff. 
uh, but but a large one, but a large one. Okay, here's what it looks like. Boom. That's it. And now she's got a buff going for 15 seconds. Okay. Uh, specializations. Defender of the Meek, Vanguard of the Quick, or Kalesa's Blessed. Now, uh, Defender of the Meek, uh, this is the Strength 12 or less. Vanguard of the Quick is Speed Champions, and Kalesa's Blessed is Female and Non-Binary Champions. Okay. Uh, now, they're all going to function uh, more or less the same in the sense that they're all going to buff for each of these types of champions in the formation. They're going to stack multiplicatively. Remember, that's the good way. And any buffs to this apply to the pre-stack value. That's the OP way. This does have item support. So Thalora is a target for gilding on this item and ramping item levels. Now, again, the max stacks you're ever going to get are like, what? 10 and that's in a in a pure built formation for that so it's not a huge target uh but but she does she does feed well off this okay uh she gets a little better scaling if you'll notice here off of strength 12 or less 590 percent versus 492 uh but it's still it's all going to function the same way so you're building this off whoever your uh, whoever the number uh, uh, like whoever your primary DPS is. Is it strength twelve or less? Is it a speed champion or is it a female or non-binary champion? And then and go from there. Okay, I'm just gonna pick the speed for now because we've got like one of each, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, in this case, I would I should have uh, based it off whatever Kent is, but I didn't. Uh, Radiance of the Sky Sense is her, her health share. It's 25%, but she also boosts healing on all champions by 25%. So she's a, one of these new combo champions. So she's going to, she's going to increase healing. And that is important to keep in mind, uh, on variants where maybe you're, you're taking lots of damage, uh, all the time and you, you're shielding, but you also need to heal top off your health. This could help, right? This could help if she's your only tank. In those kinds of in those kinds of percent damage off max health, you only want one tank with health share, and she could be beneficial simply because she would be more of a priority because she's got the health boost or the healing boost. Excuse me. Feats to spare. It's a it's a horse joke, folks. Uh, the effect of feats assigned to Thalora also applies to all adjacent champions. This is the first of its kind ability. And the one with the potential to be kind of the dark horse ability for Thalora. Yeah, I went there. Note that feats that buff her formation abilities have no effect when applied to other champions. Yeah, because why would they? But this means that generic feats are a big deal on Thalora because she shares them. So, damage all champions feats. Every champion around them gets gets that as well, right? Health health feats. Every champion around her gets those as well. Uh, overwhelm feats. Every champion around her gets those as well. Her attack speed feat. Every champion around her gets that as well. So as they, they she is a target for adding a lot of very generic feats to. Especially she's got a stat feat. Every target around her gets that as well. So there's there's a lot of potential for the for Thalora here in the future, um, and and I mean there's current potential with her in in doing interesting things in formations because of this. Um, so keep that in mind. If you ever see them start adding more feats to her, if it's if it's a generic feat, how did that just change the game? I just had to just change the game. All right. Uh, itemization. We get damage all champions item. We get health item. Great. You always want one of those on a tank. Uh, tell that to Walnut. Uh, we get the strength of the Luma. We get Paladin's Resolve. Okay. We get uh, the specializations. This is the one that you want gilding. That's why it's shiny. And that you want item levels on. Because it's the uh, multiplicity stacking pre-stack bonus. And then ultimate cooldown. Uh, feats, again, she's got a variety. She is the generic uh, damage on champions. Uh, health, again, all of these share. 
She gets the speed feat. This doesn't share with anything because it's her specific ability. Strength of Luma, Paladin's Resolve. These are just for her only, right? Uh, Overwhelm, she can share those. Uh, base Attack, Darning Weapon. This is base attack speed. She can share that too. It's only a half a second, but, you know, I think it's more functional sharing with other people. Half a second doesn't take much off of eight second cooldown, but she shares it with everybody around her. That's a big deal. Okay, and then Constitution plus one. This qualifies her for Vajra. There is some shenaniganry that can happen here. If you have Constitution plus one on her, and you have, she can't just get somebody with 13 con into a formation because you can't place them in the formation until they have enough con, right? But if other people have 13 con and a con feat, you can put her con feet in to get her into Vajra, put the other people's con feats in, place them next to her, then suddenly they'll be at 15 con and you can remove their con feet and put in something more beneficial because Delora will keep them in. Okay, so already some fun little uh, shenaniganry tactics going on with just with the durable feet. Just with the durable feet. Uh, all right, and now uh, now we have enough tanking capability to get past the mass man. Uh, and and we just kind of uh, wrapped up all the stuff. We're gonna take a quick look at this uh, achievements here, but I want to kill the mass man first. Knock back, whales from the grave, strength of the luma, and the mass man's gonna die. Oh God, she's still wrecked. What? She had more than enough tanking capability. I don't know what. I don't know. I don't know. Game's broken. <laughs> Game's broken. <laughs> Mass Man sucks. Mass Man just sucks. All right, let's look at uh, achievements. Superior horsepower. Have Thalora skip 500 areas with Plateau's a Unicorn Run. That just means use her as a speed champion a lot, folks. It's really straightforward. Uh, trinket collector for Kent collects soul trinkets worth at least 1,750 levels using Kent's tokens of the departed. That means total, not in one run. So this just means use Kent in all the different, uh, campaigns you can and push until you get some high levels and get that 1750. Uh, Loopy, he doesn't auto kill. He doesn't auto kill. He just has, he just has a very high attack damage value. I know I've survived his kills before. Uh, and then for Brig, turn the hype up to 50. Turn it up to 50. 50 stacks are higher, and we kind of talked about how to do that. It's important to remember, uh, these these uh, achievements can be done at any time. Um, obviously, doing the variant ones is easier in the event. However, the ones that have to be done in the event are these numerical ones. They're getting a goal. It has to be the event version of the Trickster's Delight free play. Uh, yeah, Loopy, hold on. Let me, let me double... Let me just, it is my recollection. Let me put it that way. It was my recollection that we just need enough health uh, to survive. So let me throw some tanks in here. Uh, let me throw some tanks in here. You know, I'm going to do this uh, while we're listening to our song. The song for the break is Briggs. It's a song for Brig Hellclaw. It's the, the show will always go on. When we come back, I'll start doing uh, the Q&A portion. Claw the dragon charmer, the only bond you'll ever need. Brig Hell Claw the heart disarmer, just rode in on your lover's steed. In the shadows, he moves unseen, while on stage, he takes the lead. Brig Hell Claw that bearded strummer, don't forget to buy him me. Below Mount Tiamat, his words disarm the worms. Sneaking in the dark of night to steal your heart for sure. In the light, he'll make things right and you'll love him even more. Bring help for that rakish siren, the spinning tales of distant shores. Bye. 
yard Watch out for what he has in store He's in your town for one night only Be sure to bring your gold Sit yourself down and drag a flag And enjoy the stories told Running songs to friends and foes His music warms your soul Brick hell claw the storyteller And I'm back, everybody, and apparently I'm a filthy liar. I, yeah, I don't know if they changed him. I swear I've tanked his ability before. I swear I've tanked that with just a lot of health. Uh, but I guess not. Added a bunch of health, a bunch of tanks in and a bunch of health potions, and he still one-shot me. So so the key to the masked man is crowd control. Uh, well, the fact that he is, he's uh, multi-attacks and crowd control. Stuns, knocks backs, things like that. If you have somebody like, uh, as you can see the tanks I was using here, if you have somebody like uh, Egbert, Egbert's got a knockback. Uh, Egbert will keep him at play, stuff like that. Now, I'm a filthy liar, but I play a filthy liar. Wait, no, I'm not a bard. What am I saying? Uh, oh, one thing I wanted to point out, because uh, I think I saw some commentary uh, in chat, like, there's liars, and there's like event quests now, and one of the event quests is is something like, get a champion to 100, or get the event to 100%, or things like that. Uh, what you want to do is you want to look over here, folks. Does it say 100% complete on these champions? If it doesn't, uh, then you just want to click on it. You just want to click on the champion, you come to a new dialogue page. And fi figure out where the check mark isn't, because basically 100% means you have a green check mark on all of these. More likely than not, what's holding you back is one of the achievements, and it's usually whatever their specific achievement is. Usually, like if you're like 93%, you're missing an achievement. Okay, so just know 100% means doing all the things, including the achievements. Including the achievements. All right, uh, we only have like four questions. Four? We have 40 minutes, folks. I can't take 10 minutes on each question, so throw more questions in chat. Uh, please put question call it in front of them so that uh, we know they're from me. Because if you asked questions and you didn't put question colon in front of it, they're not over here for me. It's assumed you're asking chat and not me. All right, uh, Vase, uh, my son regularly gets team wiped by the boss in the events level 50. Yeah, any tips for avoiding that? Again, uh, crowd control. Um, let me look at, so like uh, among your initial champions, Nayeli on her ultimate has a stun, has a stun. It's a screen wide stun. So that's going to help. That'll stop him in his tracks for a short period of time. Uh, Ashara uh, has a knockback. And usually if you're going to use, but it's, both of these are fairly long cooldowns. The knockback is huge. Uh, you would want to, you would want to hit the knockback. You'd want to let the mass man get almost to the formation, then shove him all the way back to the edge of the screen with the Shara's ultimate. Then before, before it touches the tank, then hit the stun. And then he's stunned at the far side of the screen. And then he has to walk all the way back, right? These are good ways to do it. Uh, also a uh, hitch who is an evergreen champion you can get from signing up for the newsletter. Again, open up the menu, hit newsletter, sign up for the newsletter day, and get hitched in Idle Champions. Uh, Hitch has a multi-attack. So, and, and the Masked Man is a hit-based boss, so anybody doing one point of damage or more is going to take off 
is going to take off uh, chunks of damage. So multi-attackers, Ashara has multiple attacks, Hitch has multiple attacks. Um, those are going to be good for you. Kent, as we just talked about, if you put him in, in the potent poison spec, is going to get multiple chunks uh, of bud, like a bud damage every four seconds. That'll remove multiple chunks. So anything to slow down or knock back the boss uh, in this event will help you out. Uh, or anything that lets you do lots of attacks. Uh, uh, another ultimate is... Uh, uh, Celeste ultimate does uh, like that fire and it'll do multi hits. So if you can catch again, you want to clear all the other everything else, then drop ults and catch that. Uh, that'll take off multiple chunks. Jarlax's ultimate takes off multiple chunks. So that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. Uh, Niskis, did they fix click damage kill stealing from Thalora? From what I can tell, yeah. For me, it's still kill stealing. Um, I, don't know. I don't know. Did you patch? Because it's been working great. It's been working great for me. Like, truly. It's been fantastic. Uh, earlier this week, I had like 250,000 gems. Now I got over a million. Thalora's fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, I don't know. So, Lance, how many named gold chests for Thalora do you have to open to get have a chance at all epic? Um, after you have all green. Oh, here's the thing. Uh, when we talk about gearing up a champion efficiently, and we start throwing around like getting to all green, that's about getting to blues. Uh, epics are just number. Epics are a numbers game. It has nothing that you can't get to epic efficiently. You can get to blue efficiently, and that's based off getting to all green with by opening um, electrums first. And then named silvers until you have all green or better gear. And once you're at green or better gear, then you start popping golds and you're guaranteed a blue uh, with every gold chest. That's But that's all you can do because there's no guarantees for epic except for the pity timer. So the most number of chests you'll ever have to open to get full epic is if you run every pity timer, that's 54. In my experience the actual number ends up being somewhere in the 30s. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more, but it tends to average. Over the six years I've been playing this game, I tend to get full epic somewhere in the 30-something number of chests. Um, and if I don't, well, that's what, that's what patron chests and targeted time gates are for. Uh, I did already gear up my, because, because I wasn't going to spend the whole week waiting for everybody. <laughs> I already did already gear up my Thalora. So I am, I'm not only am I full Epic, I'm full legendary, I'm full legendary. So that's just what I do. It's inefficient. Don't do that. But full Epic is great. Mean Cab, I missed the, during the ability review for Thalora, the one of the items was good for potion polish target. Which was it? Oh yeah. That's, um, that's this one. The Basalt Dagger. Her slot five, it's her uh, specialization items uh, because those get pre-stack bonuses. They're multiplicity stacking and they get pre-stack bonuses. So it's this one, this one. Uh, I also, I tend to on tanks, I'll put a shiny on uh, on the health because they're, they're a tank, right? <laughs> I want a lot of health. I want a lot of health. Uh, oh, jeez, let me know. It's not related to Idle Champions. And don't find a way to relate it to Idle Champions. I won't answer it. Uh, Bellswin. Bellswin, I'm going to come back to your question. Uh, I'm going to come back to your question. People asking non-Idle Champions questions. Not going to get answered. Uh, nobody. 444. Is Kent's damage bonus strong enough to be worth using him in an Artemis formation? Or is a pure support like Point going to be better? Well, here's the thing. Artemis, I, I'm, I can't really answer this for you because it's going to depend on your gear. But Kent is a DPS slash support, which means he is he is kind of the combo meal that Artemis likes. Because Artemis gets support buffs, but also gets a target for them. Right? Because Artemis observes off another DPS that's getting those buffs. So Kent could be your 
target for buffs as well as also being uh, somebody who's providing more support buffs. So Kent is a good combo meal. You want those DPS slash supports with Artemis if you can. Now, whether it's going to be good for you depends on what your gear is. Like, is it, do you already have a target? Do you already have a combo meal target? Uh, or not? Like, you're going to have to figure that out. Artemis stuff gets real picky in particular. I don't do Artemis stuff. I understand Artemis works. I just don't like using him personally. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it depends. It's going to depend on your gear. As with everything in this game, it's going to depend on gear. Um, and whether and whether you already have a, a target, like a DPS target in or not. Right. Um, Del Shift B, how do I fill up Briv's 50 hype stacks? Uh, I went over this in full earlier. <laughs> I went over this in full earlier. Ultimately, it's like read his abilities. Um, you need to try to maximize as many of these as possible. The most you can get out of Rallying Court is 10. Uh, the most you can get out of Inspired Bard uh, is 12. Uh, the most you can get out of Backup, I use Backup Singer, but then that's going to lower the net. Well, it's going to depend because that's going to change uh, Inspired Bard. But the most you can get from Backup Singer is 18. I actually like that better than trying to max Inspired Bard, which could max at 12. Uh, so 18 plus a couple from Inspired Bard plus 10 from Rallying Chord usually gets me to around 30. Uh, and then Critical Moment technically has a maximum potential of 30, which would be 60, right? If you combine all of the things I was talking about. Um, Critical Moment can get you to 60 on a boss level that continuously streams enemy like Valindra Shadow, Shadow Mantle. Uh, so that you can have 100 enemies out at once plus the boss. Uh, that would get you 30. Uh, and then your ultimate will give you 11 more. Will give you 11 more. So figure out some combination of what did I just... That's There's 71 points minimum for you. Figure out some combination of, of those 71 points you can earn and you can get a, that's, man, I should go do that because my max is at 56, but now I know I can get, I could get, yeah, I could get 71 at least. Yeah, I might have to go do that. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of points available. There's a lot of maximum break hype stacks available. Uh, you just gotta, you kind of gotta go target. That's one of those achievements that you have to target a specific uh, free play with. And work on. Uh, Spank, you know, my Artemis team upgraded enough to hit Area 2000. Wow, well, okay. And my Briv is forge up. Okay, where should I be focusing my blacksmith contracts now? Uh, the rest of the speed champions, I guess. I feel like you probably already did that. Though, if you have, if you have, uh, I mean, if you didn't and you ground up enough to get your Artemis team upgraded like that, that was a little inefficient. But speed, uh, speed champions usually next. Uh, where I've been through, where I threw some uh, contracts lately, is I buffed up my Tatiana so that her enemy spawned item was at about a thousand shiny level, a thousand. So that on those on those cases where I need to farm lots of enemies, like large numbers of enemies, I can just do a Tatiana farm. I did the same with Melf. I threw his item up to a uh, thousand as well, so I can spawn just a ridiculous number of enemies. And using Melf and Tatiana, just you know, if it's like kill ten thousand of these, like okay, Melf and Tatiana now go on my formation, and it makes it super easy for me. So if you have contracts to spare, that's something to think about. Also consider raising your item average item level floor for all of your champions, and not just who you're using your Artemis uh, in your Artemis group. Uh, my current floor is, is 200. Um, it's been fine for me at 200. Uh, if I went a little higher, I could probably finish some of the higher... I could probably do a little better in some of the higher variants, but I feel like uh, the bigger bonuses I'm going to get are when I start raising... If I can start raising my legendary levels on more champions, um, that's more power. But, you know, but with contracts, I can do that with contracts too. So speed champions and things that are going to speed up some of that grinding stuff for you. And then after that, uh, look at look at champions that have multiplicatively stacking abilities with pre-stack multipliers. 
that are based off item support, those champions will do amazing things for you if you give them, you know, thousand item levels, right? Or more. That's why Artemis is what he is. So you should kind of already understand that functionality. Artemis is as strong as he is because he's effectively a multiplicatively stacking champion with pre-stack multipliers with that with that one item. Uh, Pierre Moody is a good idea to use blessings early game. It's a good idea to use blessings, period. Uh, Pierre, uh, welcome to the game. It's probably newer, I'm guessing. Uh, here's the thing with blessings. Make I have a, I have a whole video guide for blessings uh, and divine favor. You might want to check over on the Cena Games YouTube. Uh, where I go into each of the different kinds, current kinds, uh, a little more in detail. But the big thing, the big takeaway is make sure this check this box has a check in it. As long as you leave and leave that there, that will ensure that you never accidentally spend too much favor, which can be harmful. But as long as that's checked, you're good. You're good to just buy whatever you can buy until the pop-up comes up. When the pop-up's like, are you sure you want to spend? Then you say no, uh, and then you try something else. But yeah, as long as the as long as you're using the checkbox warning and saying no when it comes up, spend that favor. When you earn new favor, start like you do a deep run, you start a new run, check to see if you can upgrade anything. Uh, all the time. All the time. Um. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna go into Bellswin's question. I'm gonna do this last one. Vesa, another question for my son. This is a general question. Can you e an e number? No, that's not. I mean, you, you that's not how scientific notation works. Could you just to be pedantic and figure it out? Sure, but that's the the whole the whole thing about e. So the whole thing about uh, scientific notation. So up here, uh, you know, we have a number and it's followed by an e. The E is the, something with a decimal point and then two places and then an E. The number after the E is how far to the right you move the decimal places. Now, if we're dealing with a whole number, the way you can think about it is, is if it's just 9.00E80, what you can think about it is, is 80 zeros, right? Uh, but if it's not, if it's like, you know, here, 9 point something, E83, then then you're just you're moving the decimal point that number of spaces to the right. Um, it's not. It's, it's just, honestly, it's it's going to sound weird. It is unimportant to understand what the number actually is. I know that's going to sound weird, but when we're when we're if you just use scientific notation, it is unimportant to understand what the actual number is. All that you need to understand is, is the number going up, staying the same, or going down? And scientific notation tells you that better than dealing with the letters. At a glance, I can tell what someone, like, what's their damage look like? When they make a change to the formation, uh, I can look at Bud and say, did it go, is it going up? Is it going down? Is it staying the same? That's what we're dealing with, so, yeah. So we don't want to confuse things, but if you are trying to think about what the actual number is, it's just move it, move the decimal points to the right, whatever the number after the E is. There's a lot of people trying to explain it in different ways, but I'm going to just, I'm just going to say the easiest way to think about it is just move the decimal point to the right a certain number of ways. All right. Bellswin asks the big question that a lot of people want to know. Well, not a lot of people. Some people want to know. Some people that are Briv Gem farming want to... Ooh, I got a gold chest. Uh, is the Laura useful in a Briv Gem farm? And the answer to me is yes. Very. Very, very, very useful. Uh, now, I don't know if... Oh, no. I don't know if I got enough stacks. I probably didn't. So this is going to throw this is going to throw this off, but that's okay. This is an event grind. Uh, I didn't. I did not get enough stacks. Uh, so I can't demonstrate this. Let's go over to Mad Wizard. Let me just double check here real quick. 
Let me just double check. Let me double check on the Thalora stacks. Uh, she's not in the formation, so it isn't going to matter. Urg, arr, arr. No, I was going to rush to like 27. So, yeah. It would screw up my Brave Gem Farm if I actually rushed with her at 27. So, hold on, let's... Uh, but no, see, I just jumped. I killed something and I jumped to 28. So it is, sometimes it's targeting one after the zone. Sometimes it's targeting the same zone. So here's the thing. Uh, I'm going to take her off now because, well, hold on. Do I get, well, I get five rush stacks. That's fine. It's fine. It is a, basically, Thalora is a new thing you need to, uh, is a new thing you have to factor into your, the way you do your, the way you set up your, uh, jump farm. So it's going to be pickier with, uh, your favor value. Your favor value is going to have to be a set value that runs off of if, if they ever fix it to if they ever fix it to actually be uh, always the area after the target, which it is not currently, uh, then you want to like if I have it at, at my favor here at 76. What this means is I am going to rush to area 76 or sometimes area 77. That is fine for me with my Briv Gem Farm because my reset area was always 687. That's where I had my Modron to reset at. But my stack zone was usually 686. And that was so that if I accidentally screwed up the Gem Farm, it would double stack on 686 and 687. Like if I had too, too few and I had to move a single level. Uh, but it actually works perfectly here because then it, it handles this variant. So I'm either going to rush, I would either rush with the Lord to either area 76 or area 77 uh, with this. But that means I have to keep my, I have to keep my uh, stack values, my favor value at either 76 or 81. It has to either be end in a one or a six. It can't be anything in between. Because if it is, she's going to rush me to the wrong place. So she she adds a she adds a difficulty uh, level based off you know do you have the right favor or not um, which in the current system with how we level up uh, legendaries is totally fine because I can I can manipulate it very, my my favor levels very easily I can bring them down easily can't take them up as easily but I can bring them down super easily right. So I can hit the target goal. Now, if they ever change that system, which they've talked about, the Laura becomes much more difficult to use in a Briv gem farm. Uh, but currently, uh, she works fantastically because she's going to skip uh, past boss 75. Normally, she won't right here because she doesn't have any stacks. Well, she's going to she's going to skip us there. We just went to 10. Oh, no. Yeah, see, I didn't have her at... Uh, this is the downside of not having the right number of rush stacks. It's almost as now you've got to manage your rush stacks and Briv's jumps. But uh, with the feet, you're fine. With the feet, you're fine. Uh, so Briv's just going to bounce along here. Thalora is going to earn with because I have the feet into every five areas. She's going to hit 76 stacks, no problem. Uh, and then when we reset, she'll rush us to either 76 or 77. Uh, and for me, it works uh, every, every time lately the only variance i've run into lately is 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 it going to end on 76 or 77 again i think you said you're on uh epic so if you're on epic maybe you don't have the patch i don't know what am i on five four four what does this say yeah five four four but again it was a hot fix i think i think what fixed i think the thing that fixed her uh, getting credit when a familiar kills it was a hot fix because it's not showing in the patch notes. It's not showing in the patch notes. 
Uh, but here's the thing. So Thalora, if you can get, if, if, if all of these things line up for you, if your favor value lines up and you have the feet, uh, and you can find a way to fit Thalora in, you'll see, I removed Whittle. I removed Whittle. Whittle's a, Whittle's a Whittle bit of a big deal for the speed formations. Usually I removed Whittle and I am farming more gems than ever. Uh, because she skips 75, uh, so 25 bosses, collects them effectively instantly for me. Um, which also means, I want you to keep in mind, we're skipping 75, uh, air, 76 areas. Briv doesn't have to jump as much. Which means... The number of stacks I need to build is lower, and it's significantly lower. It cut for me uh, the number of stacks by about 25%, which means I'm sitting on my final level uh, for a shorter period of time, which means my overall gem farm is more efficient in multiple ways. Multiple ways. Um, now, this is kind of how I tend to do it lately because I've had a bunch of uh, had a bunch of large speed potions, so I've just been double up. I'm just been doubling with a gem bonus, and that's why my numbers went up so much. But but the lore is making this so much more efficient. Now the one the downside that I have here, even the, even with this downside, as you can see, I'm not I'm not necessarily insta killing. I do need to uh, on certain some of these off levels. I do need to test out like if I can uncap this uh, and then fix the the end gain zone I should be fine um, but as this sits I don't have enough click damage to just get me exactly where I want to go super efficiently right so I am I am you know doing a bit of a stutter stop before I get here um, but even with that, more efficient with the Laura in. More efficient with the Laura in. Well, I see you asking each other questions, but not me. So <laughs> if you don't put question colon in front, I don't, I don't know what you know. I'm not talking about. All right. Uh, that's where I'm at. I'm somewhere in the 3000s is where I need my stacks now. And I think... Uh, I think I have this tuned still four or five thousand, so I can tweak this back down again. I'm a little too high, uh, so I could tweak this down a bit. So Laura, though, it does have her rush deck. See, I'm into the one thirty, so well above what I needed. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uncap this. We'll see if that screws up my next run or makes it better, or makes it better. All right, so here we go. Thalora is gonna get a kill, and. She didn't get a kill. She didn't get a kill. There she got the kill. Now we're at 81. You gotta remember, Thalora has an 8 second attack speed, so it may take a jump or two before she gets her kill, but we got it. We still skipped a bunch of levels. Still skipped a bunch of levels, so uh, we'll see if I, if I screwed this up or not by uncapping my leveling. We'll find out when we get to the end. Belzman, thank you. See, it's my favorite. It's causing mine to break. I mean, that's that again. That's that's a new thing you have to keep in mind uh, for getting her to the right level. Otherwise, she's going to jump you to the wrong place, right? So, again, I, and and there's, uh, I feel like it's half and half. Sometimes it's going to skip me where I want, like on the ones and sixes, and sometimes it's going to skip me to the twos and sevens. Uh, but I have mine set up in a way that that works still. It's a little slower when it, when it runs me on the twos and sevens. Um, but overall still earning more gems than I was gems per hour than I was before. Oh yeah. Your favorite is E89. Yeah. You'd want it to be like 91. I would think. 91 or or spend it down to 86 but one or the other one or the other uh i don't really want to mess with my torm anymore because i've actually leveled up all of the uh 
all of the champions that have items that I'm using in my pushing deep pushing formations uh, are already at like tens for their Torm items. So I don't want to mess with them anymore. Because uh, I'm just wasting scales, spending stuff in Torm, and I'm, I've got a low number of scales again now. Or what I feel is a low number of scales. I need to start doing deep pushes in other, uh, in other campaigns. In other campaigns. And maybe look at gem farming in a different campaign, potentially. Because now Thalora... Uh, Thalora really encourages you to have, a, you know, the highest favor possible. And I do have a couple campaigns where I'm in the E90s. So Tiamat, E91, Kalimvor, E92. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if any, either of those would work. But maybe if I could get... I mean, if I do a deep push in Oral and in, in Icewind Dale, if I can get that favor up into the E9, like E91, that might be nice. Yeah. So it's really, you're really rewarded a lot more for having a lot of favor with the Laura. With the Laura. Really all over on the Centaur thing, huh? I think I have 40 billion liars. I don't know what 40 billion is. Uh, conversion has only given me two. I don't know what you're. Okay, I think. We're, are you talking about conversion? Hold on. Hold on. Let me get into this. Wasn't a, this, you didn't address this question to me. You just posted it in chat. So I will attempt, since we don't have any other questions, I will attempt to answer it. But let me make sure. The thing I need to focus on, I just made a big change. I unlocked my uh, level ups. Am I still getting like 3,500-ish stacks? Otherwise, I'm going to be in trouble. Should be good. Should be good. All right. How much more efficient is this? Oh, we're, yeah, we're totally fine. I can probably add some damage in from somebody. 40, 4, 4k. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's better than it was. I can add some damage feats in. Okay, good. Good to know. All right, so the thing about conversions, I think what you're talking about is after the event ends, what's your conversion going to be, right? Uh, here. So it's telling you, uh, I have a bunch of favor, and you're only going to receive this amount. Well, the amount you receive is based off the the campaign you're targeting uh because this isn't it's not adding like here i have 8 15 e76 it's not adding e76 favor so you can see i'm going to receive e77 so it's clearly not adding that favor it is taking the favor you currently have and multiplying it. it's better if you read up here based on the amount you earned so I have E62 Lyra's favor. Uh, I'll receive a 626.21% boost to the favor with a data image choice because the way this works is it takes your exponent, it takes the order of magnitude of favor you had, which is six for here, the number after the E. This is why if you're doing billions, this isn't going to make any sense to you. This is why I try to encourage everybody to switch over to scientific notation. If you're on a computer, just hit the Y key. It'll switch it. Otherwise, go into the settings and, and click on uh, the box for scientific notation. Because those regular numbers aren't going to tell you how the multiplier works. It's taking this, it's taking this number, 62, for each of the for each of these orders of magnitude, you get 10%, which is why it's 620%. Now, where are the other 6.21? It's it's just 10, 10%, 10%, 10%. Uh, so 620% based off this 62. It's giving you that kind of, it's multiplying that by what you currently have and then adding that total to your total. If you have a very low value of favor in the campaign you're trying to convert into, then it's going to look like a no number. The total number doesn't matter. This is where people get hung up. The total doesn't matter. 
So see now, so if I spent the last two weeks in the event, is all that time lost? No, absolutely not. I only have 2,000 Torm's favor. I just started. That's fine. So it sounds like, uh, what is the billions? Is that, folks, is that E10? I think he's got E10 favor. Or they have E10 favor. Uh, so if you have 2,000 Torm's favor, guess what? You're getting another free 2,000 Torm's favor. You're doubling your favor. Time in the event wasn't wasn't wasted unless you've been sitting at E10 favor for a long time and you were doing deep run after deep run and you didn't get an increase in order of magnitude. That's how you know you're at your wall for a campaign for favor. But if you're doing deep runs and, you're, and your order of magnitude of favor, overall favor is increasing with every run, you're still getting progress. Now, whether it's worth it to you, it's a whole other story. Um, yeah. Like, I, I could get to, uh, in, in this event, I could probably get into the E80s. Is it worth it to me? Not really. I could. I don't really care. I got a lot of favor in places. Uh, but but that's going up like E18. Well, for somebody who's at E10, if you could go up E18, you'd be like, yeah. Right? So you have to figure out what's worth pushing for you. As long as you're over E8, again, E8 is kind of the target just to make sure that you're, you're able to do things easily. As long as you can get, as a newer player, as long as you can get over E8, you're great. You're great. You don't necessarily need to do more deep pushes. You could, you could. Doing deep pushes in an event is a good way uh, to see what kind of progress you're making in the game. And that's why they have these achievements now to tell you from event to event, how high are you able to push now? How high are you able to push now? And it's tracking it in an achievement form or in a, in a, in a quest form, which is the over kind of the only good, it's, that's the good part of this. So you know, okay, now I'm up to, well here, I'm up to 1600, I can get to 2000. Uh, but yeah, for a newer player, they're, they're really tracking your progress that way, which is nice. Um, so yeah, it wasn't wasted. Uh, a lot of people are going to tell you, oh, go do a bunch of deep runs in Torm before you convert that favor. And I'm going to tell you the opposite and just convert it right away. It's a multiplier and multipliers with multipliers are just, yeah. Whenever you're multiplying stuff, it, it doesn't matter. Like if, if you put the multiply in front of the other, you end up with the same number. So just do it right away. I, but I, what I recommend is, is in any who, for all of you, your target campaign should be whatever one you're actively working on, not the one with the highest favor, whatever one you're actively working on, because then you're going to see the benefits of the work you just did in that event immediately. Okay. Get your free favor in the place you're working on. Uh, CSUN, I appreciate your sharing the effective use of chess to get new champions good gear quickly. Follow up your share during the event. Do you continue to open Electrums or open whatever you have at the beginning and then start the restock process throughout the event? It depends on, uh, so, so again, you're opening Electrums and like Silvers. I, so I open a bunch of it. So what I do is I save my Electrums until an event happens, take the new champions, pop the Electrums, uh, burst all of the Electrums and, uh, and any sil named Silvers. And as long as you're green or better gear, then you can start saving up Electrums for the next event. Save up Electrums for the next event. So I save Electrums in between events. Now, as a brand new player, you're going to have lots of champions that, are, that don't have green or better gear. So you should just be popping Electrums all the time. Uh, but once you get to the point where all of your champions are green or better... You can start save. You can do that extra nice little bonus of starting to save electrums and only opening them once you get that burst of new champions in an event. Phoenixium uh, Ultimatum, what specs level do you have on your Briv farm here? Oh, uh, it's not about that. Uh, the spec, well, the spec is the one that uses fewer uh, fewer stacks, obviously. Um, but I have a four jump brib. There's a lot going on here. I don't have time to explain uh, brib gem farming here. There are guides out on the subreddit by Zeke uh, and Lediath. 
if you want to look up uh, both of them. Look, read guides from different perspectives, because this is a very difficult thing with a lot going on. Um, yeah. Sir Lanster is the game about leveling items and collecting champions, partly. Or is the game about completing the adventures? Uh huh. Seems to be the level you should be limited by adventure progress, but not that the adventures are relevant. Uh, no, I mean it's all it all it's all about it's about all of it. It's about all of it to a certain point. Then that then you get to a point towards the end game where it's less about completing stuff and more about completing other things. It's yeah. It depends on what part of the game you're in. Uh, your goals are going to change uh, over time. Uh, and I saw a question. I think I missed the memo from CSUN. What's up with my champions being quick change artists during runs? You're using Jim, and Jim has an ability that changes their outfits. Uh, thanks, Gar. Just tested. Niska says, just tested again. The hotfix for click damage kill sting is now working for me, too. Nice. Nice. And Dilettante, what is your optimum number of electrums to pop for new champs? Oh, I don't. I don't look at it that way. I burn all of them at the start of a new event. We get like 25 to 30 a week, usually. Um, which means I end up with like 75, somewhere between 75 and 100 Electrums. Sometimes it's even more than 30. Uh, and I'm only gearing up a single champion, so that puts that champion in full blues. Uh, I, don't, I don't limit my opening of Electrums. I burn them every event. Just like I burn all my silvers and all my golds every event. That's just when I that's 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 when I open all my chests. Uh, but yeah, I don't so I don't limit it at all. I don't limit it. I don't think I don't think people should. I don't think there's any reason to sit around with Electrum sitting in your inventory uh after an event. Uh, Vase, wait, and I would say, last question, uh, sh should I use Blacksmith, Contracts, and Jim, or wait, Briv, or, or, or on Jim, or wait until they unlock Briv or Humon? Wait until you unlock Briv or Humon, and I usually recommend Briv. Okay, we're out, folks, and this is the last stream of mine before Halloween, so we have one more spooky song, and it's Dance Macabre. It's the, the song for skeletons. The song for skeletons. Uh, if you like hanging out with me, come hang out with me in about an hour over on my channel, Twitch TV slash Carwar. I'll even I'll even make it easy. You can you can click on my name there in chat uh, and hit the follow button. I'll be live in about an hour. We're doing a dark urge playthrough of Baldur's Gate three. We're still in Act one and it is dark, folks. I'm making the worst possible choice. Well, not the worst. I'm just making very dark choices for the most part. Um, and I have themed my character as prequel John Wick. So <laughs> if you ever want to know, why is John, what kind of past did John Wick have? Boy, it's dark. It's a dark one. <laughs> so I'm a human monk uh, looking like Keanu and we're just making bad choices. Come hang out with us. Uh, but I also stream Idol Champions on Mondays and Wednesdays on my channel. Uh, and Mondays now, Fate Breaker is on. Idol Champions presents Fate Breaker. Check that out uh, Mondays, uh, Monday afternoons, Pacific time. Uh, I stream right after that, so you can then come over and hang out as we play some Idol Champions. Uh, but there are amazing giveaways, uh, both digital and physical, uh, when you're watching Fate Breaker, so be sure to tune in. Otherwise, have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks, everybody, for asking questions. Bye. Once I had a heart, a liver and a brain Fell on my own sword, now this is what remains Raised up by dark magic, then my flesh was shed Now I serve my master as animated dead Every new adventurer is fodder once their floor. A walking bag of bones to add to our decor. They bring us everything we need inside our worthless hides. From within their flesh, a new soldier shall arise.
Their prayers are 